What's up YouTube? Dave here at The Action Box and today we're showing you how you can build your own CNC machine from scratch in a home garage. We've always wanted a professional grade CNC machine, but they're just so expensive. So we decided to build our own with a budget of $15,000. Building this machine took just four weeks, but I did spend six months designing the machine and sourcing parts from overseas. We then purchased all the raw steel that we needed and begun to process it on a CNC machine that we previously built. That being said, you can easily copy everything we did here on a manual milling machine found in any machine shop. After processing all the raw metal, we washed it off with isopropyl alcohol, gave it a good wipe, and then painted all the pieces with a decorative rust preventative. With all our custom components manufactured, we were able to then begin, and the build was quite simple. All it required was aligning the pieces, bolting them together, and then adding the spines. Now these spines are used to transfer all vibrations from the steel frame to the epoxy base, which we'll get to in a minute, but here's how we made them. We took some threaded rods, cut them in half, and added nuts to the top to act as anchors. So at this point, I decided to share how we mounted the linear rails using a dial indicator to ensure that they're perfectly parallel to one another. But to keep the video short and entertaining, we cut the explanation. And the two rails are going to be perfectly parallel to one another. Continuing on with the frame, we attached some final pieces and spines that would be used to connect the column to the base of the machine. Next, we assembled the frame for the X and Y axes of the CNC table and installed all required parts. Of course, we tested the construction midway and continued to install the ball screw mechanism as well as the steel plate, which will then be T-slotted to become our milling table. After lunch, we placed the steel frame inside of some melamine molds that we made. We're now going to fill these molds up with epoxy granite to give us the strong and heavy machine base that we want. In order to make these molds, we actually spent a week building a CNC router. If you want to see how you can quickly build your own, watch our CNC router video. The link is in the description below. Ooh, and now we get into the fun part. 40 gallons of epoxy. We mixed it all together with some black dye, and once it was properly blended, we poured it into the molds. Then we added a bunch of rocks and mixed that all together as well. All right, so now while we wait for the epoxy to dry, let me take just a quick minute and explain to you why we're using epoxy mixed with rocks over a steel frame. Precision machines are meant to be as rigid as possible and their absolute worst nightmare are vibrations. Usually these machines are made of cast iron, which is almost as strong as steel, but dampens vibrations far better. It is however more expensive and has to be settled for several years after production, which means that by the time the machine is sold, the design is several years old. Doing what we did here allows us to benefit from the added strength of steel while damping vibrations far better with the epoxy relative to the cast iron. Our design is also cured and ready to be employed in just days. Lastly, we add rocks because one, they are a cheap filler, which saves us even more money by using less epoxy. And two, they add mass to the machine base. And mass is a great way to also dampen vibrations. If you think about it, this is why most machines are built to weigh several tons. All right, enough of that. Our epoxy has cured after 24 hours, so we brought the pieces inside. I quickly added the rails for the counterweight mechanism while it was easy to do so, and we took apart the molds to reveal a beautiful epoxy granite casting. A quick coat of paint for no reason was our final step before adding the linear rails and ball screws for precision robotic movement. We also took this opportunity to add the final pieces of the counterweight mechanism, which will take the stress off of the servo motor that has to lift the 200 kg Z-axis assembly. Speaking of which, to make our Z-axis assembly colored yellow in our CAD designs here, we took our raw steel to the water jet cutter, but you can get similar results on a more easily accessible plasma cutter. And once the pieces were complete, we assembled them like a puzzle and welded the structure into a single component. Now don't you forget that spray paint. Next, we surfaced the critical face to make it parallel to the back, and it was now ready to accommodate the spindle block, which we had also finished machining and threading. Finally, we slid the spindle into the block, aligned the holes, 
tighten the screws, and the assembly was ready to be mounted onto the column. Of course, we can't forget the primary focus of this experiment, the epoxy granite, to help dampen vibrations in the spindle as it cuts away. And there you have it folks, our base and column were finally completed. Now on to the hard part, lifting a 1.2 ton assembly and mounting it accurately. I'm just going to give my dad a quick shout out here for always helping us when we need an extra brain and pair of hands. You're the best dad. Alright, the two parts are now one. Next, we need to add the X and Y axes which we built earlier. Luckily, this was just a matter of placing down the assembly and then screwing in the bolts into the rails. The pneumatic and hydraulic pistons used for changing the tools were now installed. This leaves us with the final step in the Z-axis assembly, which is mounting the 8 horsepower servo motor used to run the spindle. And hallelujah, the mechanical aspect is all done. Now onto the electrical and electronics. We laid all the pieces inside of a box that we found in a scrapyard, and after making the necessary connections, we used my fiber laser to have some fun and engrave our logo. Why? You may ask, for no reason at all. Now that the electrical was done, we moved on to the electronics and control box. A few final connections followed by cable management and the machine was finally alive. And here it is, the finished operational machine. From now on, everything we're adding are nice to have features, such as the weight covers on all axes. We also used our trusty router again to create a cage that would in-house the coolant and all particles that fly off the machine. We also used it to cut out some custom sliding doors, which were pretty cool. We also used the machine itself to surface and T-slot the milling table. And then we did some final testing for the counterweight assembly before concluding the build. And here's the final machine, it's beautiful. Weighing in at over three tons, it features an eight horsepower spindle, servo motors on all axes, and my favorite part, an automatic tool changer. We've got this massive metal block that we're going to be turning into molds for a local company. So let's get started. After 11 hours, the first operation was done and the machine will now change tools and continue to work for another 9 hours to smooth out the molds. And here's the machine in its final minutes after a 20 hour job. The last step for a finished product was to sandblast the surface. And there you have it, our finished product made on a machine we built all on our own. Feel free to like and share this video and we'll see you next time.